happy Sunday, March 12th. It's time for another episode of Mayhem in the Markets, brought to you by TraderAid, where we help you find your edge. The CNN Fear and Greed Index hit extreme fear on Friday, as there was some level of anxiety about the potential for a spreading financial contagion with the failure of Silicon Valley Bank, as well as Silvergate. We saw that extreme selling pressure get us into really oversold territory between the Powell testimony on Tuesday that was seen as pretty hawkish, as well as the banking concerns on Friday. The pressure in equity markets led us to the third most oversold we'd been since the COVID crash, leading to a bit of a bounce in futures markets right now with the S&P up over 1%. And we can see there were signs along the way that Silicon Valley Bank was in trouble where its unrealized losses exceeded its total equity. And this is something that we spent some time talking about at TraderAid.com. If you're interested, you can come in and watch the video. We have a free trial for one week right now. So you can check out our latest research and see if it's a good fit for your investing and trading. Our goal is to help educate, identify risks, and find opportunities for our members. And we can see that. Silicon Valley Bank's unrealized losses were surging for the last three quarters. There were signs along the way, both for the people that worked in the bank's highest echelons of power who should have been trying to contain these losses, but also through the third parties that could look at all the public disclosures of this bank, whether it was shorts who were opportunistically taking advantage of this or clients who may have been getting increasingly nervous and tried to get ahead in line before the worst ended up happening. Either way, there were signs and it is important to make sure that one has, if there's more than the FDIC insured amount at a bank, some diversification of banking exposure or even uh, looking at alternatives. Some folks think that it's a good idea to park money in short-term treasuries, count myself include them in, in included in that group, because I think that is a wise place for short-term cash that we might not need in the near term. But if we do, we can sell those things and get the money back almost 100 cents on the dollar in almost any market. Next up, we've got small bank reserves are low and they could go lower. And this is a problem. We can see this even though Silicon Valley Investment Bank was a large bank. Silvergate was a pretty small bank in comparison. And those reserves dropping is a concern, especially because we can see that the stresses for some of these banks have been enough to overwhelm them. We just got word that Signature Bank has been closed by regulators. And that's the last bank that was really a portal between crypto investors and the crypto world out there. So this between Silvergate and Signature Bank closing could create some significant problems. U.S. housing affordability is at lows that are just about as bad as what we saw going into the great financial crisis. This is a big problem for first-time buyers who are essentially locked out of this expensive housing market where there's not a lot of opportunities out there to get into housing at a good price, whether one is buying or renting. And that's undermining people's ability to consume because what do you do when you get a home? You fill it with stuff. Well, if you can't get the home you want, if you have to downsize, that means buying less stuff, which means less consumption and a slower economy. And it also means a whole generation not building up home equity and instead renting. We also see U.S. mortgage applications for home purchases dropping sharply. This is another concern because it shows the housing sector is continuing to slow, something I recently wrote about on my other project, macrovisor.com, where Aisha and I talk about the macro picture and what it means for the world around us. Definitely recommend checking it out. It's a Substack website. You can subscribe for free right now and get our insights where we do talk a lot more about what's going on in the economy. Next up, we have investors are demanding six-month bills with rates surging higher. We saw one of the best six-month auctions we've ever seen, and that tells us that people really do like rates where they are, that this is a pretty attractive place to uh, gain some exposure here, and I would agree. I've been a buyer of these myself, and I feel like it's an excellent, safe way to get a high yield and not tie up one's money for too long. And we can see that on Treasury net speculative positioning, there is a very large amount of short interest here. That does not mean that it's going to inevitably lead to a squeeze. We don't know how much of this is hedging, but it does mean that this is something we should keep an eye on because it is a historical extreme. 
And we can see bankruptcies rising in Europe. I'm sorry for the blurriness of this chart, but this is important, especially transportation and storage, accommodation and food service activities. They're seeing a surge in bankruptcies. This is a pretty large surge for these industries as well. So it just tells us that there is economic pressure. Um, Aisha wrote an article about Europe talking about whether it was a bear or bull kind of economic and market scenario. And it's also on macrovisor.com. Definitely recommend checking that one out too if you're interested in the European region. And shipping costs are back to 2018 levels, which is a great sign of relief for that element of adding to inflationary pressure. Doesn't necessarily mean all the worst is behind us because more inflationary pressure is in services than goods. So the relief in goods has already kind of happened. This helps maybe a little bit more, but the bigger driver now is in services. And that's something we're going to have to keep an eye on moving forward because we know central banks are. And that's all I have. I hope everyone enjoyed this presentation. Thank you so much. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy my videos. Check out my work at TraderAid and Macrovisor. Consider following me. Um, you can check me out on Twitter. That's twitter.com slash mayhem4markets, mayhem4markets. And I'll look forward to catching you next time.